Hello again, fellas. Bit of a different one today. Rather than look at a specific character and see what makes them great or interesting, we're going to be going for a bit of a broader scope. In fact, we're taking a look at Warhammer as a whole and looking at what draws people into the settings of Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, and the Old World. That's right, kids. We're breaking free from the chains of fantasy for once and going on a big, deep dive. There is a strange uniqueness about Warhammer. It is a ridiculously expensive hobby, one enjoyed by not a huge proportion of the world, and yet it has this grip over a broad range of people. You never know who might jump into the conversation when you and a friend are discussing whether it truly was Magnus's fault that the Horus Heresy got out of hand. Even with its varied but admittedly small fanbase, there is a metric ton of material in Warhammer. Warhammer Fantasy is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Warhammer 40k has been going on for nearly four decades too, and is a setting that has been constantly built upon. Age of Sigmar is a newer setting by miles, but it is also full of intricate stories to read. Though Warhammer Fantasy may be dead, it's still fondly remembered, and we're even getting the old world to hopefully restore its former glory. Of course, a few people may even know this already, and have come to Warhammer from the tabletop game. Like me, I bet many of you probably first encountered the hobby either through stumbling into a Games Workshop store, or seeing some minis your friend had and thinking they were cool. But the question then becomes, of what made you stick around? For some, the war game is enough to keep you coming back, as you collect and build an army powerful enough to conquer the galaxy or the mortal realms. However, what I think keeps people attached to Warhammer more than anything is its lore. Kicking off your journey into Warhammer's lore is a daunting thing, as, due to the aforementioned established nature of the IP, it's essentially like learning an entire history at this point. This is especially the case for 40k. As I said, literal decades of work have been poured into making the grimdark far future a real place that feels as though it has trillions upon trillions of lives being lived within it, and plenty of diversity in its countless planets, characters, and stories. The same can be said for Fantasy 2, even though it does admittedly have a smaller scale. It's still got a lot of content to pour through. This monumental task of diving into Warhammer might put a good amount of people off, and if we're being honest, it probably does. There is still so much I have no idea about in these settings, despite the many hours I've poured into reading in my free time and researching for these videos. And yet, I think to the Warhammer fan, the fact there's so much to read and learn about is actually what can make it incredibly enticing. We've all had a TV show, movie, or game that we wish would never end, that we wish had more stuff to learn about it. Warhammer provides that. You might be able to find out absolutely everything there is to know about the hobby, but it will take years, and by the time you've finished your great work, Games Workshop will have brought out 10 more books for you to read. We're seeing it more and more recently, especially with 40k, as that has become a setting where you can actually see a story developing, rather than stuff just getting randomly added into the maelstrom of the galaxy as a whole. As well as there just being a lot of it, Warhammer Lore does have a strength in the ease of its access. Now, I know I just said that it's so big that it can put people off, but hear me out here. When you dive into Warhammer, you don't just get handed Horus Rising and then are expected to read chronologically up until Gilliman's resurrection. Most people pick a favourite character, a favourite faction, or just stumble upon the setting from a YouTube video, learn a bit more, and then build upon that knowledge from there. There are a lot of jumping off points in Warhammer's lore. We can pick any single entity in Warhammer and get at least three connections into different factions, characters, and more from them. Look, let's take Fulgrim, for example. Through reading his Horus Heresy novels, you'll not only find out more about him and his Empress Children Legion, but you'll also discover a good deal of knowledge about the Chaos Gods, the Eldar, the other Loyalist Legions, the Traitors, and Horus himself, while also getting a good deal of information about the biggest event in 40k so far. Very few Warhammer novels and stories find themselves isolated around one character or faction. They'll have a focus, yes, but if you find yourself particularly interested in one element that pops up, there's no harm in looking over to that. What I'm trying to say, in probably a long-winded and not very good way, is that not only is Warhammer massive, which can be enticing in its own right, but it allows you to break down its enormous size through exploring smaller aspects first. As someone who doesn't really play the tabletop game, but thoroughly enjoys the lore, I found this to be a great help in sticking to Warhammer, as I can just dip into whatever I fancy at the time. Another way I think Warhammer's lore is worth checking out, even if you're not into spending hundreds of pounds on miniatures, 
is because of the stories it tells. Not every Warhammer story is a banger. We've got the End Times books and some of the earlier Age of Sigmar novels as examples of where perhaps the writing or story itself doesn't hit the mark. But then you've got things like the Tyrion and Teclis books, the Von Karstein saga, Eisenhorn, and the Horus Heresy. And plenty more to dig into if you want some great stories. Of course, that's a bit subjective there, but you'll be able to find something that you like and that stands out among the vast amounts of Warhammer books that are out there. As I said before, especially in the past decade and a bit, it seems Games Workshop have put a lot more effort into the storytelling of its settings. Rather than just making up cool stuff for the past, which is still fun to read about, there are now events in the setting which bring back fan-favourite characters while also giving us the feeling as if it's worthwhile to be invested into the lore. Think about the Vashtor saga that's going on right now. If you want galaxy-spanning wars or more personal stories centred around two elven brothers or anything in between, Warhammer lore is packed with these narratives that'll draw you in. Even though the settings are all grim and dark, there are also some stories that add even a little bit of humour and light-heartedness into them, such as the Caiaphas Cain books in 40k. Obviously, other books are available in the sci-fi and fantasy genre, and I'm not just trying to give Games Workshop free ads here, I'm just trying to point out a few of the reasons why people are so rabid about this damn IP. More than just what you can find officially though, Warhammer Law has spawned some of the best fan-made content I've seen online. There is a real dedication among some projects such as the Vrax or iconic Astartes animations to do the IP justice. Even in parody content, like if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device, you see the people working behind it all care about Warhammer even as they're making fun of it. It's a shame Games Workshop has put in policies which essentially neuter the creation of fan-made content, as it was once one of the main ways that people would get into the Warhammer lore, or stuck around with it when Games Workshop wasn't particularly on a hot streak. Perhaps. If you're already into Warhammer lore, me rambling in this video isn't for you. I hope you found it engaging nonetheless, and I apologise if you haven't. But maybe this is more for the people who are looking to get into a grimdark, but also endlessly memeable IP. Either way, now that I've gone over the reasons you should be into Warhammer lore, for the sake of balance, I'm going to now give you guys some of the reasons why Warhammer lore isn't always great, and also then I can stop people calling me a Games Workshop plant in the comments. As I said, Warhammer Lore can give us some great stories, but it can also give us some very bad ones. Something else it can do though, is give us nothing at all. While we're all enjoying the Vashtor story right now, there were times in 40k where you had no narrative and were just reading about random events that never connected to each other so the galaxy could keep chugging on exactly as it had been for the past two decades. Worse still, you'd have people with clear biases writing the lore, which is horrible when you're an orc guy and Games Workshop decides Gazkol is going to essentially draw with a Space Wolf's captain, for example. It's almost worse if you end up being a player or fan of the faction that's getting the favouritism though, as you'll end up being hated by the community for years. Ultramarine fans, for example, are only just now recovering after years of being memed on. Moreover, if you're not into Edge or can't stand much grimdark stuff, Warhammer isn't the one for you, Chief. Of course, there are outliers in this, like the Caiaphas Cain books, as I just said, but no matter what setting you go for, you're essentially buying into the premise of there being no good guys, no real end in sight, and a lot of war going on at all times. But, if you're not a filthy heretic and could withstand all of that, I see no reason why you wouldn't want to dive into Warhammer lore. If you want to get started, why not check out some of the other videos on this channel? It might be a good way to get to know some characters. That'll about do it today. Uh, to my regulars, sorry about going off the usual script, and I'm hoping to be back with more character stuff soon. Uh, I just thought it would be nice to do another more general piece for once. I also have no idea how long I'm going to keep going with this channel, as I feel like I'm not making enough good stuff for it to go anywhere. Anyway, as usual, let me know what you think, and until next time, look after yourself.